right? Let's get this thing started. Let's get this thing started right now. Let me, um, real quick before the thing gets rolling. Y'all come on in the room, everybody. What's up, guys? Welcome to Tariq Live right now. Let me start getting my stuff together here. Where we at? Where we at? There we go. All right, y'all come on in the room, man. We're here. Live. Let me turn my volume right down. Now, let me start getting... All right. I'm here, though. How y'all doing, man? How y'all doing, good family? Let me um, do this. I always got to do it right when I go live. All right. I'm here. Hold on. Let me just throw that in Instagram. Come on, Graham. And boom. There it is. All right. There we go. There we go. All right. What's happening, guys? We're here. <sighs> All right. We are here. Fresh. Ready, ready to rock out. All right, let's get it popping. Let's get this thing popping like we need to get it popping. Because I'm ready. I hope you guys had a great week. Shout out to whoever gave me, somebody at the Foundation of Black American Conference gave me this shirt. Riot for me if they kill me. I love this. Somebody gave this to me. I want to say my brother Raheem gave this to me. I got so many wonderful gifts from some of the beautiful vendors from the Foundation of Black American Conference. You then Shout out to them. And look, we're so excited. Thank you. The ladies like the hair. Thank you, ladies. The ladies are liking the hair. <laughs> I'm, I'm switching it up. I'm doing some, some new things here. Yes, indeed. But yeah, I love this shirt. I, I want to say my brother Raheem Brother Raheem Shabazz gave me this shirt. I want to say that he gave it to me. I think so many people were giving me so many gifts. Yeah. And we're just so, we're still excited about the success of the Foundational Black American Conference. We are actually planning the second one right now, guys. We're planning the second one right now. We're looking into Tulsa, guys. Next year is going to be the 100 year anniversary of the Tulsa riots. So that would be so powerful for us to go there on that anniversary and just get real busy with it. So we're, we're looking into that right now. Shout out to my sister, she's helping out. Shout out to my sister Tia, she's gonna be helping us out. So we're gonna, we're gonna start way in advance. By that time, this whole COVID thing should be wrapped up. It should be taken care of by then, hopefully. But Tulsa, that, that would be a good spot. Somebody gave that suggestion. And Tulsa would be a good spot because it's in a central location. It's only a couple of hours from every single direction. Dallas, it's like, what, 45 minutes, a 45-minute flight, I would, I would assume. It's probably just a couple of hours from Atlanta, a couple of hours from Chicago, about three, four hours probably from New York, two or three hours from Los Angeles. It's not that far. Hop, skip, and a jump from um, Detroit. So that would be a good move, man, just to pay homage to the history, the culture, to the ancestors, and to have that spirit of what Black Wall Street was about, bring that entrepreneurial spirit back and, and just really chop it up on that, on that historic day. That would be something that would be real fly. So we're, we're already in the planning stage on that, man. So this thing is going to be a monster. It's uh, sacred native black American land. Yeah, see, that's what we, we got to start paying homage to our folks. You know, you, you, when stuff happens, we got to pay homage to them. We just can't just let it fall by the wayside. And also, we just can't wait for white people to um, tell our story and tell our history. And wait for them to give us a green light to honor it. No, we got to do that. We got to do that. But a lot of stuff we're going to talk about on tonight's show, ladies and gentlemen. Shout out to all my mods in the room. Some of you asking about the Lovecraft story. You know what? First episode was good. The second one got a little bit too weird for me. It was all over the place. The second one got a little bit too weird. It was, uh Got a little bit all over the place. Yeah. Yes, we were going to have Claude Anderson at the Foundation of Black American Conference in Atlanta. He was a little, you know, 
under the weather as far as um, a little sickly. Uh, but we couldn't get the brother. We, we still mentioned him at the, the Foundation of Black American Conference. We mentioned our brother. And hopefully he can come to the, you know, the next one. Yeah, I heard about power. I'm going to watch um, Ghost Book 2. I'm going to watch that tonight. I heard there was some funny style stuff on there, but I'm, I'm going to check it out. I'm going to check that out. Um, shout out to everybody who got the... Hey, have you guys got the Karen keychains? Now look, a couple of the white supremacists got upset. They said this is... They were like, wait a minute, they... they they, it's funny to them, but then they're like, wait a minute. Hold on. These are the Karen keychains. These are great little holiday gifts. These are great little stocking stuffers because it's holiday season right now. You got the little white supremacist woman on a, on a phone telling on somebody. So <laughs> go to KarenKeychain.com. KarenKeychain.com. Okay. These are the Karen keychains. You, you didn't now look. I, I done got a, a little bit of hate mail, a little bit, because the white supremacists. This is funny to them because they like to laugh at the Karens, but they're like, "Wait a minute, wait a minute, Tariq, you're kind of being a race beta. Wait a minute, you're being a race beta. This is kind of racist, don't you think, Tariq? It, how was this racist? First of all, this is not goddamn racist." This is not racist, okay? This is not fucking racist because we're not making fun of the race of the person. We're making fun of the actions of the person. A couple of white supremacists are upset calling this is reverse racism. It's not no fucking reverse racism. This is about Karens calling the police on people. That's the joke. See, you white supremacists do racist shit. Y'all would make little figurines of black folks with big exaggerated lips and bug eyes and crazy hair. So, well, no, 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 no. That was racist. It was, you made fun of people for who they were. We're clowning Karen because of their action. This is not racist. This is not reverse fucking racism. All right, so stop that talk. Like Paul Mooney said, he said, the, the dominant society, they hate to be made fun of. Especially when Negroes are doing it. He said they do not like, they, they don't like to be the butt of the joke at all. Oh, y'all do all types of shit. You're dressed in blackface. You, you wear your, your little Afro wigs during the holidays. Oh, when we're the butt of the jokes, hey, come on, just lighten up. Well, goddamn it, lighten up too. Lighten up with the fucking Karen keychains. Y'all lighten up too. It's all jokes. Ha ha. KarenKeychain.com. Karen. Keychain.com. And the next time a Karen is running up on you, guys, if you out in the Karen go, hey, Karen, is this you? Karen, this this is you, Karen. I want a Karen to walk up on me. Karen, can we get a selfie with you and yourself, Karen? Karen, this is you right now, Karen. Oh, I can I would love for a Karen to run up on me with the dumb shit so I can throw this on them. <laughs> and look, if you got your Karen keychain and a Karen is calling the police, please take a picture with the keychain and the Karen at the same time. Please, please, please do that. That would be the funniest shit ever. If a Karen runs up on you with the bullshit and she's calling the police, take a picture of her and the keychain at the same time. That would be hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> Life imitates art. Man. KarenKeyChain.com. That's where you can get yours. Okay. A lot of stuff we're going to hit on tonight. And everybody, hit the like button. Hit that thumbs up button. Everybody hit the like button. Hit that thumbs up button. Hit the like button. Now, as we know... Before we get into the heavy, heavy stuff, well, everything is going to be heavy. Y'all, everybody knows what's, what's going down with the whole situation with Breonna Taylor. They, they, the, the race soldiers are not going to really get punished. The race soldiers are not going to get punished. And, you know, the police down there, 
the politicians, they're corrupt to be damned. They're very corrupt. And you know, you got these Negroes out here in the Benjamin Crumps. Everybody is cashing in on the finesse. A lot of folks are cashing in on the finesse. And that's a part of the game that we're going to have to cut out. We got to cut out that whole finessing part of the game. Because, listen, family. People make these deals with police. And I said this on my last broadcast, and I've said it online. I've been talking about how the crumps and all these people, they go in here and they make these little old deals. Shout out to everybody hitting the cash app. King Flex 818, dollar sign. King Flex 818 on cash app. People hitting that up now, by the way. Shout out to you. I talked about how the crumps and all these other people go in here, they do some ambulance chasing, and they go around cutting these little deals where they parade the family around to talk about how they forgive. They always do that, and they make sure the lawyer's face is all in the camera talking about they found one family member at least, maybe several, but at least one family member who's talking that forgiveness shit. That's orchestrated so that the law will be lenient on the officers. They do that deliberately. They understand if the family is saying, I forgive the officer, potential jurors will hear, will, will hear that. And if potential jurors see that the family is forgiven, the jurors are going to be like, or the grand jury, or whoever, well, shit, why should I prosecute? The family ain't tripping. So let me just charge it to the game. Case in point, down there in um, Dallas with the Amber Geiger case, they talked to a couple of jurors, and the jurors were like, well, shit, we wanted to give her a harsher time, but the way they were hugging on this bitch, we were like, fuck it, all right, 10 years. The jurors said that all that hugging and kissing and rubbing on this woman kind of made them say, okay, well, why should we be all hard on her if they ain't? If, they, if, if, if this is hug fest for this woman. So they know what they're doing when they do that. They know exactly what they're doing when they're doing all that hugging, kissing, and forgiving. They know that they're throwing the damn case for the race soldiers. They know that they're throwing an alley-oop to the race soldiers so they can get leniency. They know what they're doing, and that's some sucker-ass shit. And the fact that we are calling it out, we should have been calling it out. You did That forgiveness stuff is for the birds. You got to stop that. So... On Twitter, one of the women from the show, The View, Sunny Hostin, she hopped on my timeline because I've been very critical of Crump, Benjamin Crump. So Sunny Hostin from The View hopped on my timeline talking about, because look, I, I, I made a tweet. Ben Crump is part of the injustice charade where he makes these little deals with police and city officials to fumble cases where he gets settlement money. Notice in almost every case Trump is involved in, Crump is involved in, the officers are never punished. They get slaps on the wrist. Now, first of all, where's the lie? Okay, let's stop there. Okay, y'all saw what I tweeted. Where's the lie in what I tweeted? Point to a case that Benjamin Crump has been a part of that some officers got held jail time or even if they did get jail time because I can't think of one that got jail time any serious jail time but I can't think of any case that Crump has been involved in where an officer got any jail time you can't count Amber Geiger because they were doing everything they could to stop this woman from getting hard jail time Amber Geiger for murder got a slap on the wrist. She'll be out in a couple of years. Let's be very clear. Amber Geiger won't even do five years in no damn prison. She's going to be out in a couple of years. She might be out by next year. They did everything they could to thwart that case and give her a smack on the wrist. Let's just be real. So let's just, there's no lies there. So Sonny Hostin from The View Please, Tariq, don't spread misinformation. Enough of that going on in our country. Ben Crump is a civil rights attorney who secured among the largest settlements in the country's history for Brianna's family. 
Criminal charges are not up to him, plus defamation ain't cute. Okay, first of all, nobody defamed him. He don't win no fucking cases. Don't sit up and talk about he's a civil rights attorney. And what civil rights is he securing? What civil rights has Benjamin Crump secured? Civil rights means basically the right to live. What civil rights has Benjamin Crump secured for somebody? Civil rights is punishing race soldiers. That's civil rights. Making sure that black folks are going to live. Benjamin Crump, with all of these damn settlements and all this hugging and forgiving, not only is he not a civil rights attorney, that puts a bullseye on the backs of black people around the country with all that Sambo shit he's doing. What civil rights? What the, what civil rights? Tell me what civil rights. I, he's a civil settlement lawyer. Getting a payout for getting killed ain't no goddamn civil rights. The family bucking their damn eyes getting a payout ain't no fucking civil rights. What you trying to say, Sonny? That's not civil rights. Getting paid off. For these people killing your family that the taxpayers have to pay, we have to pay that. Yeah, they got a big settlement and we foot the bill. That's the con game. The police got that qualified immunity. It's not coming out of their funds. That money is coming from the tax dollars of the public. We're footing the bill. So now when we can't get roads fixed, in black areas, when we can't get the right money for schools in black areas, when we can't get business development money in black areas, the money is going to Crump and all of these people that the race soldiers have killed and we got to pay for it. They've been running a con game on us, man. They're running a con game on us. Now, understand, Sonny Hopkins... Hopkins, whatever her name is, Hostin, okay, Hostin, Sonny Hostin, understand that she's Puerto Rican. She's black and Puerto Rican, okay? So a lot of these people from these immigrant backgrounds, these people with these dual allegiances, they don't mind us getting wiped out because these are people who are tethers. They want to replace us anyway. Notice all of these non-foundational black Americans are always co-signing some fuckery. They always co-signing some shit that's going to really undermine foundational black Americans. And I let her know. I said, Sonny, he's not, and this is my, my thing, I said, he's not a civil rights attorney. Here's the tweet. He's a civil settlement attorney, and how is him going out making settlements that taxpayers have to foot the bill for while no officers are getting punished? How is that working for black people? Then she said, first of all, there's no such thing as a civil settlement attorney. But I suspect, or at least hope you know that. Second, this strategy is very successful. Civil lawsuits have been used historically against hate groups to stop violence against black people. No history. What? the fuck is she talking about? What is she talking about? What, what the hell is she talking about? How are these civil settlements successful? What is she talking about? Successful how? For who? It's the woman on The View. See, they put these folks on TV who ain't one of us, they ain't part of our culture, to be the damn mouthpiece for black society or people of color. And then they start spewing some bullshit like that. Successful for who? Black folks are getting slaughtered every day. Successful for who? What's she talking about? Yeah, she sits across from McCain every damn day and Barbara Walters and all those folks. What is she talking about? See, we got to watch these, these folks from these immigrant backgrounds who try to talk about our business. These people get into our business and start talking the dumbest shit ever. Yeah, she's a, and she's a lawyer, so she knows what she's saying is bullshit. She's a lawyer. She's a lawyer, and she knows what she's saying is some bullshit. But coming around us throwing bullshit and confusion works for people like her because they want us to be 
on our ass so they can be the tethers to come and replace us. You understand? So Whoopi's on the view. Understand, Whoopi was with Ted Danson, and that's all you need to know. Ted Danson, who put on blackface with Whoopi sitting there skinning and grinning, that's all you need to know. I don't even have to go there. Okay? But listen, we got a lot of these people, and hit the thumbs up button, guys. Hit that thumbs up button, hit that like button. Hit that thumbs up button, hit that like button. Let's get about 10,000 of them folks up in here tonight. We got almost 7,000 now. There's a lot of these people, especially from the Caribbean. There's a lot of these people, especially Puerto Ricans, who, but before I go there, before, let, let me just go back on my point about the crumps and all this stuff. Let me, let me make my point about that, just to drive that home before I go in about the Puerto Ricans. There was a case out there in um, Baltimore. This shows you how they be out here doing these little deals. There was a sister right here. This sister right here, she had a settlement. The, the cops came in and abused her. And they kept, she got a settlement, but then the police illegally kept half the settlement money when she spoke about the allegations that police abused her. So what happened was the sister was abused by race soldiers. And then they got a settlement. After the settlement, she started talking shit about the cops. Yeah, fuck them, whoop de whoop de whoop And in the settlement, they had a non-disparaging clause in there where you're not supposed to talk about the cops. So then they held half the money, which was found to be unconstitutional. That was unconstitutional. Let me, let me go down here. Let me go down here. This is the slick shit that goes on in these little settlement deals. Okay, Ashley, this is her name. She sued three Baltimore officers alleging they beat and tasered her, verbally abused her, and arrested her in 2012. Um, the city settled the case in 2014 for 63000 She responded after the son reported the original settlement. She responded to accusations that she initiated the arrest to get a big payout. And she said that was a lie, basically. The city said that Overby Underwood violated a non-disparagement clause, otherwise known as a gag order, and they kept half the settlement as a penalty. The gag order has since been ruled unconstitutional, and the city said it stopped using them years ago. Despite those rulings, the city continued to fight Overby Underwood and tried to keep her money according to federal records. So... That's part of the agreement, guys. That's part of these little agreements that if y'all do these little settlement deals, don't say nothing bad about the police now. Don't say nothing bad or we're going to keep some of your settlement money. So that's why Crump and them niggas be out there with, oh, oh we forgive. Can I give her a hug? I forgive. The Lord knows her heart. That's part of these damn settlement deals. Don't you disparage the police. So we're not digging this out our ass now. We're not digging this out our ass. This is in their documents here. It's hush money. Don't you say, if we give you this, that means shut up. If we give you this money, shut up. We're going to drop this case. Enjoy your little old money and don't say nothing. Let our race soldiers get off because that money is coming out of your tax dollars anyway. So shut your ass up and leave us alone. So we got to stop the con game, guys. We got to stop the con game. But like going back to Sonny Hopkins, though. Sonny acting like we're just pulling stuff out of thin air. And again, a lot of these people from these non-foundational backgrounds, they really have a bug in their ass about foundational black Americans as it is. Because number one, they know they come from cultures where the people failed and fled. They know that. That's why they always have to try to wag their finger at us as if they are people to listen to. You come from a failed background where you completely failed and tapped out. Your family tapped the fuck out and bounced. So you don't come over here and accuse us or, or criticize us for anything. Sonny defended blackface too. I believe that. There's another chick on Twitter, and not Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. This is a girl named... Janicia Garcia. She follows me on 
Facebook. She said some real funny style shit before. But this chick, this Latina from Puerto Rico, she made some comments about how black people, how did blackness get so toxic? Now, this is a Latina from Puerto Rico, and she follows me. She's been following me for years. This is Jen Garcia. Now, this is her talking about how black Americans, our blackness is, a, we look at it as a scab. Now, listen to this. Listen, this is how they, they talk among themselves. Hola, mi gente. This is a note from my black. Okay, and, and that's another thing. Okay, I hate when, hola, my Stop it. You ain't in fucking Puerto Rico, all right? You, you, you're here. Y'all cut all that old exotic this I know I look like a light skinned Negro, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna be extra with the the Spanish. I'm gonna be so extra, talking with your damn over the top accent and all that old bullshit. Okay, all right, all right. Hola, la pequeña. Stop it. All right, just talk regular. All right, with all that old extra shit. Oh Lord, here the here they go. Hola, mi gente. This is a note for my black brothers and sisters, those that identify as black. I am specifically speaking to African Americans, not Latinos that identify as black, Asians that identify as black, aliens that identify as black. I'm talking about African Americans specifically. My observation. My 11 years on social media is that a lot of you wear your American blackness like a scab that you let people pick at every single fucking day. Every day you're posting a carrot, a caustic, every day, or a Josh, or some murder porn, or some hashtag, or it's just this constant regurgitation and perpetuation of this blackness gap you wear in America, right? And I say very specifically African Americans because I think the black experience all over the world um, is different. Uh, yes, there's- Okay, let, let me, let me, okay. Um, Genesia. The scab is white supremacy. Our blackness is not a damn scab. That's you projecting your anti- black mentality that you got that self-hate because we know you got a black abuela okay let's let's stop it you got a black abuela over there in puerto rico our blackness is not the scab that's some shit that you're projecting the scab is white supremacy we go at white supremacy our blackness is not the fucking problem we're comfortable with who we are. That's why we didn't run and try to be like somebody else. See, y'all run from Puerto Rico and come over and trying to be like white people, and they never accept you. So you got all the anti-black hate, but not the benefits of white supremacy. Yeah, Puerto Rico is self-hate central. Don't come over here talking about it, it, your blackness is a scab that you peek at. You peek at the scab. No, we fix our problems. We're trying to fix our issues, which is white supremacy. We didn't do what your family did, Genesia, which was got their ass up and ran the fuck out of Puerto Rico and left it to rotten hell because the crime rate in Puerto Rico was insane. The rapes, the killings, the murders, the robberies, robbing motherfuckers in broad daylight. It's a hell hole in your homeland, sweetie. So the scab is there. That's why you got your ass up out of there. That's where the scab is. You got your ass out of there. So you didn't you didn't pick up the scab, the scab, I pick up the scab. No, you got your ass on and ran. We didn't. We fight white supremacy here. That's why, well, it's not black people all around the world. It's like a black Americans, because we're the only ones who really goes after white supremacy on a regular basis. And if it weren't for us going after white supremacy, you wouldn't be over here enjoying all the benefits of the free black labor. You already fucked up in your homeland. Your family didn't do shit. They left it fucked up. So you come over here and the only reason you're able to enjoy anything because we stay on these white supremacists next, fighting for every little benefit that people of color get. See, that's the problem. 
We've been up here fighting for resources and like dumbasses, we've been sharing them with everybody. And then they turn around, well, damn, well, it's like a scab. It's like, like you're picking it at that scab. Shut the fuck up, dude. Come on, man. Let me play some more of this woman's fuckery. Let me play some more of her stuff. Hold on. There's racism all over the world. Don't fucking misconstrue my words. There's racism all over the world. What I'm saying is that being African or black in Africa is a difference than being black in America. In America, there's this constant regurgitation, perpetuation that you're an ex-slave and everybody's against you. And there's racism and Karen hates you and Josh hates you. Sweetie, and this is something that Puerto Rican like, Puerto Ricans like this, where it's, 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 you, you just a regurgitation that you're an ex-slave. If you are Puerto Rican or in, from any Latin place in the Western Hemisphere, people, all of your countries were slave colonies. Sweetie, your homeland was a slave colony. Jen, Boo Boo, you come from a slave colony, dear. They sit up here and lie to themselves. What they do, Puerto Ricans like that, and not all Puerto Ricans. You got some Puerto Ricans who know the real fucking deal, but Puerto Ricans like that. They sit here and tell themselves that they're mixed with Spanish and Taino Indian. They got this mass collective denial thing where they act like that shit wasn't a damn slave colony. They act like it was some kind of deal with the colonizers and the, the native people there and the Spanish. Uh, it was a deal that went wrong or something. The, oh, the, the blacks, that, that's them over there. But no, no, I'm Taino, I'm Borica. I'm Borica. That's what Boricua is. That was the original name of the native people then. See, they'll call themselves Boricua or Spanish, but they act like that the Negro part wasn't even there. So when they say that Boricua, that's the, the name of the original native Aboriginal people there. You know? They don't, they act like the, the Negro didn't exist. It's either Boricua or Spanish. And your black ass abuela is sitting right up there right now in Puerto Rico that your ass them forgot about. It's a U.S. property now, but again, it's a different culture. You know? So they got that real bad over there in Puerto Rico. A lot of Puerto Ricans come over here with that bullshit ass mentality and that fake ass accent. You don't speak, come on. Motherfucker, come on. With all that extra, hey, I had La Pequena. Uh, I need some salsa and some menudo. Stop it, hold on. Systemic oppression and racism over and over and over again. And my thing is that, yeah, we have to speak um, against oppression, racism, right? No te deje. Like, um, oh, black stop. Give me a knife. Say, right? Do no harm, but take no shit. But, um, my gripe is with a lot of you African Americans where your blackness like this scab, this misery that you want company for. Oh, no, okay. Stop projecting, boo. No, baby, no, that's you projecting. No. Misery is your homeland that you got the hell away from. That's the misery. We wear our blackness, Foundation of Black Americans, we wear our shit as a source of pride. We ain't calling ourselves Spanish or English. We don't identify with the colonizers and the rapists. We don't identify with the colonizers. Y'all identify with the fucking colonizers. I Spanish. But you know you can't take your ass to Spain. You identify with a culture that you won't even be accepted in. You're the one who's confused. See, that's a projection. You're trying to project your own confusion and self-hate on us. We're very comfortable who the fuck we are with who we are. We ain't trying to be English. We ain't even trying to be African. We're identifying with our own foundational black American culture. 
That's who we identify with. That's why we're in the streets standing strong, standing tall against the mightiest army. It takes confidence and pride to do that. Y'all over in Puerto Rico selling pussy in broad daylight to any white man or any gringo who comes through. Talking about you Spanish and can't go to Spain. You go to Spain, they'll let you know how Spanish you are. I've been to Spain. You go to Spain and tell them, I Spanish, like, get your black ass on somewhere. Rosarita, get your black ass on somewhere. You can't even go to Spain and get any benefits as a Spanish person. See, you got these people out here who had to run from their own culture they cannot be identified, well, they can't get fully accepted by white Anglo culture. So they want to come and try to project their bullshit on the foundation of black Americans. They want to try to flex on us. We cutting that out. Y'all ain't doing that. Go sit your ass down and stop speaking on our shit. You failed already. We don't take advice from people from failed fucking cultures. You failed, yo. You wear your blackness like a scab. It's a scab. And you in Puerto Rico shitting in rivers and washing your titties by the lake. Ain't got two nickels to rub the fucking together. Let's keep it a buck now. We're going to get these people up out of our mix talking that dumb shit. All right, that's enough I'm a player her. I just be, get me pissed off. <laughs> but family, this is the thing. We... Because we're getting on code, understanding our foundational black American lineage, other folks are really showing who they really are. A lot of folks now are just really showing who they are. They're not even hiding it no more. They're showing who they are. You know? And going back to the Brown and Taylor case, um, y'all know there were several witnesses who said that they did not hear the race soldiers knock on the door or announce themselves. Well, they, they said they didn't hear them announce themselves when they went into Breonna Taylor's home to, to execute her. There was one witness who said that the police announced themselves. It was only one. And I think that was the one they ran around to the grand jury. And that's the one that all the white supremacists, right wing news sources are using his testimony to say that the cops were justified. This one nigga's testimony was really the testimony that fucked everything up. Okay? And now, this Negro, he has changed his story. It's this guy right here. This guy has changed, his name is Aaron Sarpy. And it says, the sole witness who heard cops announce themselves in the Breonna Taylor raid, he changed his story, okay? So this is this Negro here, okay? This is him right here. Now, when I read that, okay, he changed his story. I said, something is real funny style. Why? Now, it, it was over a dozen people who said that they didn't hear nobody announce themselves. So why? Everybody ain't lying. So what's up with this guy? I bet this nigga is not one of us. Sure enough, this nigga's a damn immigrant. Sure enough, they, this nigga's an immigrant. But now he's changed his story now. I don't know why he changed. He's, uh, he's telling the truth. Now he said he didn't hear the police announce what was going down. But now it's too late. But I knew. I said, wait a minute. Let me, let me do some research. Because the media is not telling you that this dude's an immigrant. They keep saying that he's he African American. The the white media is going out of their way to not let you know where this nigga was really from or whatever. They they do that. They use these immigrant coons and then they hide their identities. But I found a call that he made to Vice. He was talking to the um to Vice. And they did an interview with this nigga. And this is him now. And uh, listen to the accent. Hold on. First of all, you can look at this outfit right here. This outfit is very non-FBA, but th this is him talking. Hold on. I saw the uniform on there, so I know. And when I looked through the window, I saw it was a lot of uh, police cars. And I saw the, I saw uh, the, the armor car was parking on the left hand side. I thought when it told me to, to get inside. Well, so when I went through the window, I saw the, 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 
I don't mean to cut you off. I'm sorry. Is this before the shooting or after the shooting? It was before the shooting. Okay. Yeah. Did you ever hear anyone identify themselves as police? No, nobody identified themselves. All right. So that's it. Clearly, you hear the accent. So he, he has some kind of West African accent. The name Sari, that's kind of a Liberian name. That, that, so I'm thinking he might be from the Liberia area, but you clearly hear him has, have an accent. And with an accent like that, he's a direct immigrant. So sounds like the police, and we know how corrupt the police were and the prosecutors were in this case. We saw how they were going behind the scenes trying to make these little deals to coerce people to corroborate their version of the story. They were going to folks trying to make them cut deals and tell them, hey, if you say that Brown and Taylor was part of a drug ring, we'll, we'll give you time off, we'll throw your case out. So they were doing all types of stuff. So y'all know, sounds like they done got to this Negro and said, hey, um, listen, sorry. And we got your immigration papers right here. We got your immigration papers. Um, you heard the cops announce themselves, right? I, I don't know. I did. A, I mean, well, shit. When your green card expires in a couple of months, and we might not be able to get it renewed. Now, you you did hear something, right? Yes, I I heard it was a white man. I heard him. So that's what they 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 done got that nigga and scared his bitch ass. Now he's changing back he, because yeah, he probably feels like a punk bitch because all this shit is going down and he contributed to it. So now his conscience is probably getting at him because he saw we were standing tall. Foundation of black Americans weren't making no fucking deals with these prosecutors. They were like, look, if you gonna give me some jail time, give me some fucking jail time. I'm not about to implicate that sister in some bullshit she wasn't in. Niggas, we on code. So they got this Sambo ass nigga and scared his dumb ass. Oh, I don't want to go home. I don't want, I, I say anything you want me to say. She had drugs. I saw drugs. I saw crack pipe. I saw a crack pipe. I saw cocaine. I saw it. It was a lot of niggas around the apartment. I saw it. So they probably got that goofy nigga to say almost anything. Now he want to change it up. Because now you saw, you see the shit is going down out there. Gang? Yeah? The FBAs are standing tall out here. See, we got to get that coon class up out of here, yo. That coon class is a problem. Yeah? But everybody's getting on code against us, yo. We better understand that. Everybody gets on code against us. They get on code fast. Y'all heard about the basketball player over there in China, speaking of our Chinese minority, Asian minority coalition. That brother over there in China, it was a brother who plays ball over in China, um, Ty Lawson. This is Ty Lawson. Ty Lawson plays basketball in China. They banned him for life because they said he made inappropriate social media posts about Chinese women. It wasn't inappropriate. Some Chinese women were choosing up on him, and he was like, oh, damn, these Chinese women got ass. They got cake. So he was basically, you know, smacking that ass. You know, treating them like regular chicks. They were choosing up on him. They were throwing pussy at him. And he was he was accepting it. And though they felt a certain way. The the insecurities came out. You better understand, a lot of these groups are very insecure. Let me put up some of the the social media posts. He was at the club and he was like, um, Chinese women got cakes on the low. And then he he got a Chinese chick bent over right here. Hold on. Hold on, what's that? Hold on. I don't know who this chick is. Hold on. He was like, yeah, YOLO, you only live once. Hold on. So that's him. He was like, shit. He was making it do what it do with the Chinese women. You know, they bent over, popping in on him. And he's putting it on social media. Like, yeah, they choosing a nigga. And boy, the, the insecure anti-black sector of the Chinese men there got a little upset about that. And they said, oh, nigga, you banned for life in the league over here. So, yeah, a lot of these folks got all types of insecurities when it comes to us. Yeah? Oh, they got a lot of insecurities. 
You got a big black man over there and all them women choosing up on them. Well, them white men, well, them want to be white men, those Asian men, those honorary Aryans. They feel a certain way about that. Yeah, he, he better watch out. Shit, he should have had a mask on. No telling what coming out that pussy. Yeah. So, yeah, they feel a certain way about, yeah, when we come around, they want us to be humble. They don't want you treating their women like they treat or uh, try to treat ours. See, they try to marginalize our women and smut them out and all that old shit, and they don't like the same done to them. Ain't no minority coalition, guys. There is no minority coalition. It's just them against us, and that's okay. We got enough numbers, foundational black Americans. We know who we are. We need to stop letting these folks in with this bullshit minority coalition that does not exist. This is why we're rejecting Kamami. And Kamala Harris, I mean, poor Kamala, they act like they just want to lose, which they're going to lose anyway. Kamami Harris was on um, some, kind, some kind of live with Angela Rye, her, her Lynx Boulay sister. And Angela Rye, and they're in the same little organizations, Angela Rye was throwing her some of the most softball-ass questions imaginable. She was still fucking up. Kamala Harris was still messing up the softball questions. This is how disconnected to black culture Kamala Harris is. Let me play this. They asked Kamala Harris, who's your favorite rapper, dead or alive? This is, this is Kamala Harris in her heart. This is her blackness right here. This is Kamala Harris and all of her blackness right here. And then, uh, best rapper alive. Hold on. Uh, Come on, where we at? Tupac. <laughs> He's not. A, you said he lives on. Not a lot. Lives. I know. I keep doing that. <laughs> you say this fool, best rapper alive. She said Tupac. And now, Angela Rye is still trying to throw a lifeline because they try to make her seem like a down sister girl who listens to hip hop. So now, she don't know, she can't think of any more rappers to name. She don't know anybody else to name. This woman don't listen to, first, Kamala don't listen to no damn rap. So she can't think of any other rapper to name. So she's sitting there bumbling around. Listen. Listen, West Coast girls think Tupac lives on. I'm with you. I'm with you. So Tupac, keep going. I keep doing that. <laughs> um, who would I say? I mean, there's so many. I mean, you know, if I name one. There are some that I, I, I would not mention right now because they should stay in their lane. But um, others, I, <laughs> I don't know what that going. means. I want to know who one going. of those are. Keep going. Keep moving. Okay, all Keep right. moving, Angela. All right. I didn't, that was not supposed to be a stump read. And then yes, it was not supposed to be a stump. This is them trying to give Kamala some blackness credentials. It's just so cringy and insulting at this point, guys. But that's not even the worst part. This is the worst part of that interview right here. Because with Kamami Harris, they got her running around here being the sister girl from the HBCU who listens to Tupac and eat chicken wings with hot sauce and chitlins. When it comes to what she would do about giving justice to a black woman, Breonna Taylor, what would you do? Because Breonna Taylor, that's, a, that's the hot topic right now. So Angela asked her an easy question. What would you do? What would you do in that case? Listen to Kamami Harris's answer. She sounds like a white man. Hold on. And speaking, I'm speaking her name. The attorney general in the state, Daniel Cameron, did just that at the RNC. He spoke her name, and then there are these charges for bullets shot into the home of her white neighbor, but not bullets um, that killed Breonna Taylor. Given the fact that you were a prosecutor, would you have pressed charges against the three officers involved in the case? Now, family, that's a good question. That's a yes or no question. Family, that's a yes or no question, right? You're a prosecutor. 
Now, Angela Rye's trying to give her an out. Angela, Angela Rye was, was basically saying, okay, let me at least lie or something. That's a yes or no question. Would you prosecute in the Breonna Taylor case if you were the prosecutor? I mean, this is a black girl and this black girl magic sister girl. Would you prosecute? I press charges against the three officers involved in the case. Well, I don't, I don't know all the details of the case, but I will say this, oh. that there needs to be transparency oh. about what happened. Oh. And that family and that community deserve justice. Yeah. And, um, and that's just the bottom line. Oh, God. God damn. I, can, I cannot stand this woman, dude. God, it's, that's a no. What she means is no. What she means is I wouldn't do shit. That's what she means. That means she wouldn't do a goddamn thing. That sounds, that's what white folks say. That's what white people say when they're not going to produce justice. Well, I don't know everything that happened. Well, there has to be transparency. And well, there has to be justice. That's what white people say to say, no, we ain't going to do shit. Miss me with all the sister girl, a.k.a. HBCU bullshit. Because when the rubber meets the road, that's what she does for black women. Nothing. Nothing. I don't give a damn about you doing the Dougie and dancing and wearing your Converse and your Timberlands. Are you going to produce justice? Well, I need transparency. We don't know what happened before the tape. All right, goodbye. Goodbye. That's why we ain't rocking with that fool. Y'all running around talking about how much of a, she a black woman, Kamala Harris a black woman, because that's how she operates with other black women. Another black woman needs justice and she gets to white explain it. A black woman needs justice, a foundational black American woman needs justice, and Kamala ass sound like a damn white man. That's why we ain't rocking with her. Because she ain't rocking with us. Kamala Harris ain't rocking with us, and we're doing the same. We're not rocking with her either. Let's not play games. These folks play these little games with us and try to shame us, and they could piss on our grave. They will piss on our damn graves. Somebody else showed me this video of some of these African immigrants from the Coon sector admitting when they get here, they, they have the talk. A lot of these immigrants, some of them admit that they get the talk from their parents. Listen to this. I want to respond to you because a lot of, I can't categorically say every Nigerian got this talk. But a lot of Nigerians that travel abroad got this talk from their family. Where they will sit you down and tell you, you are going there. Don't go and talk to those black Americans who... You just go and get pregnant. You get into drugs. You get you start become the gang banging. They give you that talk. And she's being honest. She's being real. Now let's unpack that for one second. Don't you you gang bang us? You you get pregnant on drugs. Let's unpack that for a minute. She's telling the truth, but just look at that. Yeah, yeah, the wig is, I know the wig is $2, the skin bleaching in the wig, I know. The, the skin, the cake soap, I know, I know, I know. But listen to that projection. Because when you go over there to these African countries, there's a gang of orphanages out there, a lot of these mothers out here having babies, and the orphanages are filled up with babies. You're talking about getting pregnant. They get pregnant by the first white man they see. They go over to Europe. Let me tell you something. They go to Europe and fuck the first white man they meet off the boat in Europe. They go to Europe to get pregnant. Which is they try to project that shit on us. Y'all go to Europe to get pregnant. Y'all remember that, that little funky white dude named the Sperminator? Remember him, this white man out in New York? Hold on. Hold on. Remember him? The Sperminator out of New York, this white man who 
This white man, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. This white man right here, y'all remember him? The Sperminator? He, a white man who lives in New York, and look, all these women around him, these are immigrants. All of these women are immigrants around this dude. There's a white man that these immigrant women go to to have anchor babies with. They go over and they find this guy. There's a white man that'll fuck these women raw who lives in New York. He fucks them in bathrooms and gets them knocked up. I mean, it's just dozens and dozens and dozens of these immigrant women who get knocked up by this white man. Ari Nigel, that's his name. Look him up. The Sperminator. They call him the Sperminator. They only want him to, they're trying to get him to stop having so many kids. He got so many kids. But he goes there and just, the women go there, these immigrant women go to this man to get knocked up so they can have anchor babies. You understand? Yeah, he uses bathrooms. I know he got, I can imagine what diseases this dude has. And what he's deliberately spreading, I can imagine. Look this guy up. It's some real trifling shit, dude. But stay away from us, because we're going to get you knocked up. Let me, hold on, Umchuke. Hold on, Umchuke. Let's just be clear. Umchuke, and I'm not talking about all my African brothers and sisters, but some of y'all with that bullshit mentality, we ain't fucking with you with your $2 wig and your cake soap. We, no, you'd be glad if a nigga fuck you. We ain't fucking you like that. We ain't even trying to get... Well, why would we knock you up? With your $2 wig on, well, why would we knock you up? We ain't trying to get you pregnant. For what? That ain't even practical. You dig? Let's just keep it a buck. Those niggas... Those niggas would get you pregnant if you no I'm too okay. You pretty safe. You you good. You good. We ain't no yo that wig of yours. No, I'm not trying to fuck you and that wig come off and no. Nah. I'm cool. Yeah. The sisters here, I'm pretty good with the sisters here. We good. I don't know. And I'm really not trying to get you knocked up. I'm really not. We are not trying to get you pregnant. It's so impractical to get you pregnant if you come over here. See, y'all got them same fucking stereotypes that the white supremacists have, and y'all projecting, y'all project y'all bullshit onto us, man. Yeah? But y'all come over here and fuck the white man. Y'all fuck any white man. That's why we ain't fucking with because we know the more dirty white supremacist men y'all be laying up with. We ain't trying to touch your ass, especially if we know you got bed wenching in you. We ain't trying to fuck with you like that, knowing that you done been with the Sperminator. No, I'm 2K. You good. Are we cool? Nah, I don't know where you been. You been with the white men? No telling what they did to your ass. Yeah, we, we cool. Yeah, we cool than a motherfucker. But let me play the rest of that clip of this woman with the, the cake soap and the $2 wig talking all that bullshit. That they, and she's being honest. They they have to talk. Hold on. Hold on. Pregnant. You get into drugs. You get you start become the gang banging. They give you that talk. That just go to the white community, find a nice place. But they just go and be and be with the decent. Woo. They telling it. Go to the white community. See, I like the honesty here. I like the honesty. Don't do those niggas. Don't, don't, don't get pregnant with those niggas. Go to the white people and do all of that. Go to the white people and do that. That's what it's really about. You go to the white community and just be a drug mule, a, a sex slave, or you can be anything in the white, just as long as you're doing it with white people. That's what it boils down to, white worship. That's what it boils down to, white worship. To find a nice place. They just go out and be decent. Stay with the white people. They give you that talk. So when you enter America, you already have a perception of African Americans. You judge them. And of course, they can see that judgment in your behavior towards them. And they see how you are almost like, yes, ma yes master, to the, uh, to the rebels. They see, they're not blind. Mm -hmm. So when they, when they have that um, feeling... Yep, this sister's telling the truth. Now, I'm rocking with this sister. She's like, black Americans see how y'all, she called them Ebos. The Ebo, I think Ebo, uh, Oebo, I, I forgot, but you, you see how 
The black Americans see how y'all worship the white people. This sister's telling the truth. Even though her wig is $2. We, let's send this woman a decent wig. Because she's telling the truth. But we'll send her a, 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 some, some Malaysian bundles or something. They see, they're not blind. Mm -hmm. So when they, when they have that um, feeling of, um, um, when, when they become defensive, when you're in their presence, it's because they see that perception you have of them. So I know I got that talk. I mean, a lot of Nigerians got that talk. So we are over there, we are doing well, we are doctors, we are building houses, we are feeling like, yeah, so we'll come to the land of the living, we are there, the land of the plenty, and we are doing well. <laughs> Forgetting that some people sacrificed mm. for, for you to you go there in the first place. Mm. So is yeah. that acknowledgement? This sister is spitting some real shit. She's spitting some real shit. I give her credit. She's spitting some, that's some real shit she's talking. I respect that. I respect that. She's spitting some real shit. Because, again, they do have the talk. They have the talk that, um, you know, black Americans, that gangbanger shit, and, you know, y'all got Boko Haram over there and all that old shit, but okay. Yeah. You got all of these militant groups or whatever, but okay. Okay, okay. But I feel that. I feel Miss sister, she's telling, she's spitting some real shit. She's spitting some real shit. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let, me, let me play the rest of it. Let me play some more. Hold on. Because I'm feeling what this sister is saying. And some of the, the accent might be a little hard to understand, but she's spitting. Hold on. That the African American community are expecting of us, especially those of us living in America. Okay. Can I say something? Okay. Can I just say something? I just want to answer you. Mm. Because... Um, Let's not forget that you cannot give what you don't have. Mm. In our society, mm. we are racist. When white, what, no, racism, when we see white people, we worship them. When you have an organization and they come in to either look for a job or you're working there, you see where your people behave towards them. They don't give them, they don't give their people the same respect that they give to the white person. So people that already have that mindset that the white is better and will go and be fighting for somebody else, it's not possible. And it begins at home. I, I, and I, I, what, I, I, may I quickly learn that the only way this can stop, where we believe that everybody is equal, is if we take down that image that is a white man that is God. That's the only way. Yeah, I am see, telling you. This is not God. It's an image that human beings have created. Nobody has seen God. Us a different human animal. beings have created that image. Okay, I don't know what they're saying now. I don't know what they're saying now. They they babbling. <laughs> They sound, they sound like this. <laughs> they were saying, they were spin some hot to the left, to the left. They were spin some real shit though, but then they started babbling a little bit. To the left, to the left. <laughs> to the left, to the left. Everywhere I go, and they got to the left in the closet. That's my stuff. All right, that's what I'm. <laughs> but they were spin some real shit. They were spinning some, they started babbling, then they, it got all over the place. But they were spinning some real shit. I, 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 I give them theirs. They were spinning some real talk. But we in here heavy. We almost got 10,000 people up in here tonight. Um, by the way, everybody, if you're new in the room, go to KarenKeychains.com to get the new Karen Keychain right here. Get the new Karen Keychain, got the little iPhone. <laughs> Get the Karen Keychain at KarenKeychain.com. KarenKeychain.com. Get your keychain. Everybody hit that thumbs up button. Hit that like button. Hit that thumbs up button. Hit that like button, ladies and gentlemen. Hit that thumbs up button. Hit that like button. Now, what we got to do, we got to get into that whole Trump platinum plan. We got to get into that. Let me, let me pull that up real quickly. Let me pull up the Trump platinum plan. Before I do that, y'all remember, listen, I was telling you guys about those dogs, those robotic dogs that they were working on. Somebody had a video of one of them damn robotic dogs. I, I, I don't know where this was, but this thing was out there in the streets. Hold on. Look at, look at this. Oh, my God. Bro. I've been telling you. Oh, my God. Hello, friends. Now, Notice this thing, it looked like this robotic police dog that Boston Technologies, I think that's the name of the company that, that, that makes these things and they sell them to the police. 
Notice this thing scan. It looked like it scanned the women's faces and saw that, okay, they're white, so they're safe, and then walked off. But but look at this. Hold on. <gasps> Oh my god. Hello, friends. Oh, oh my god. I love you. <gasps> Jesus Christ. I love you so much. Oh my, oh god. my god. Man, I've, I've been telling y'all about them damn Boston Dynamics. That's the name of the company. Yeah, my bad. Boston Dynamics. I've been telling y'all they've been getting these things ready. Family, y'all better be safe. We better be real safe out here, guys. We better be safe. Because um, this shit is getting real. They're trying to make it seem like, okay, this is just some, some little cute robot. Nah, dude. Hold on. Let me pull up some articles on this thing. I've been telling people about this for years. Eerily lifelike. This was last year. Lifelike robot dog spot is now working with the police. Hey, don't, don't make it seem like this is some innocent shit. Look at this. These things can do all types of stuff. These shits can go in folks' cribs. Look at this. This is not some cute little innocent thing, dude. This is not some innocent bullshit, man. So it says the loan agreement between Boston Dynamics and Massachusetts Police explain it's being used for the purpose of evaluating the robot's capabilities in law enforcement applications, particularly in inspection and potentially dangerous environments that may contain suspects and ordinances. And let me see. It says the agreement doesn't allow the robots to physically harm or threaten anybody. That's bullshit, okay? That's some bullshit. That is the sole purpose of creating these damn robots, nigga. Don't you be fooled. They're trying to get in front of it. Oh, no, no, they're not going to hurt nobody. That's bullshit. Remember, Micah Johnson was killed by a robot. That's the first time that has happened in law enforcement in this country where a robot was sent in to kill somebody. They sent a robot in to kill Micah Johnson. Remember, y'all look that up if you forgot. Don't you think for a minute that shit won't be used to harm anybody. Don't you think for a minute. Yeah. They sent that robot in there with all that C4 and blew up the, the spot where um, Michael Johnson was. But yeah, avoid the damn machines. Avoid the machines. Hit that thumbs up button, guys. Y'all stop bullshitting. Hit that like button, everybody. Hit that like button. Hit that thumbs up button. Hit that like button button ladies and gentlemen now we're going to go into let me find that trump deal for those who don't know trump made this big announcement he's coming out with the trump platinum plan okay the platinum plan for black america the trump platinum plan for black america now this was nothing but the platinum con, but I will give this much credit to the Trump administration, which is very little. They're speaking more than what the Democrats are speaking about. The, the, the Democrats are still on some people of color, minorities of color, and all this old stupid shit. At least they are talking about what black folks need, and then they'll switch it up. They'll switch it up in the fine print. Now, what they do... In the headlines, in the bold letters, they'll put out this type of stuff right here. The Platinum Plan, by achieving historic employment levels for black Americans as well as increasing access to capital, blah, blah, blah. So let me go to this. Because I'm I'm, I broke this stuff down the other day. Um, in four years, Trump promises, Trump's promise to black America is... Three million new jobs for the black community, creating 500,000 new black owned businesses, increasing access to capital to black communities at almost 500 billion, safe urban neighborhoods with the highest policing standards, um, commit to working on a second step act. Okay, so all of this stuff sounds good. Okay, so when you start reading the fine print and I started grading it and circling it, 
when they make these type of announcements, you always got to read the fine print. That's where the trick bag language comes in, okay? The trick bag language comes in the fine print, all right? So this is the fine print. I started breaking everything down. Now, let's, let's look at it. Let's look at it piece by piece. Okay, black economic empowerment and access to capital. Jobs, jobs, jobs. Now, and in my red notes, I wrote all the notes in red. These are trickle-down policies for everybody. They'll start off with black, and then they'll start getting into trickle-down policies. It says reach even greater, greater levels of in, in historic employment and wage growth for the black community set in 2019 so that anyone looking for a job gets one. Seek infrastructure funding that will lead to widespread growth in the annual $500 billion federal contracting opportunities, grow minority businesses with additional tax cuts to stimulate hiring and investment. Okay, all of this is trickle down. It, it slipped in minority, that's the trick bag. And in this particular one, when they start talking about minority and tax cuts, they're talking about white women, okay? Understand the code words. That's for white women right there, okay? That's the trick bag on that one. That's for white women, okay? All of this other stuff, this is trickle down. Let's skip to the next part. It says fueling access to capital for black-owned businesses. And then right here, increased opportunities for small business lending. Okay, that means non-black. Go back down here. Make the Minority Business Development Agency permanent. Okay, that's more non-black. Okay. That's more non-black talk. Here we go. Let's go down some more. What, 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 what did I do? What did I do? What did I do? What did I do? Okay, here we go. My bad. All right. More education opportunities. Now, this is the tricky one right here. Y'all got to watch out for this. Federal and state, federal, state, and local community partnerships to close failing schools and replace them with full school choice and education opportunities to put American parents back in control over their schools, over their children's future. That means segregated schools that benefits white people. Let's break this down. Let me, let me go into this one. That school choice thing is a con, okay? When they start talking about school choice, that's a con game, guys. That is a con game. That started really in the 1950s. The school choice thing is basically this. They don't want, instead of giving black people the federal dollars they need to help the black schools, which has always been a problem, They've done everything they can to not just give the funding. When the, the, the right wing people start talking about, hey, black people, don't you want to be a part of the school choice program? Don't you want to have better schools? That's why you need to support school choice, black people, because your schools are failing. And if you had school choice, you wouldn't have failing schools. Now, the fact that these white supremacist right wingers are running that game, you already know a con is in there because if... You're so concerned about our failing schools, just write a goddamn check to the damn black school district and that will fix the problem right there. But no, 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 that's too much like right. That makes too much sense. Oh, no, 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 no. No, I got a better, more convoluted plan. It's going to be called school choice where we give vouchers. Well, how come you just can't write a check to this? My school district needs money. You, we pay taxes. Use our tax dollars to pay for the school instead of paying out families who's getting shot by race soldiers. Just write a check with our tax dollars to the black schools. How about that? No, 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 no. Let's do something better. We'll do something better. We'll do school choice where you get a voucher to go to the school of your choice. And it could be a private school. And we're going to use federal dollars so that you can get these vouchers 
to pay for private schools. So now you got a choice to go to any private school you want to go to with these vouchers, with taxpayers' money backing these vouchers. So now you don't have to worry about dilapidated schools and nothing. You can go to whatever school you want to go to. Now that's the con game. So what happens is they give the school vouchers from our tax dollars to everybody. The white kids' family are going to get the school vouchers and go to a private school. And then when they get a private school, the private schools, they are more, they can engage in more fuckery by not letting the black kids in. The public schools, you get sued. You have to go abide by certain federal rules if you're a public school. A private school, they can just come up with any reason to not let people in that damn school. And they're getting federal dollars. See, that's the trick bag. You're getting the public to pay for the shit, and we're paying for resegregation so that the white kids go to the private school with our federal dollars, and when the black kid wants to go to that, that school and say, hey, man, look, I got me a voucher. Oh, look, Jamal, this is not like the public schools. Um, in this school, you can't wear braids. You can't wear cornrows. You can't have afros in this school. I mean, this has nothing to do with race. It has nothing to do with race, but this is really about, you know, um, the, the rules and policies. That's really what it's all about. dude. Private schools don't have to let nobody in. They don't want to let in. They can come up with all types of rules. You did? It's that more haircut and shit. That's how they do it. They do that haircut. Look, my mom, back in the 80s when I was in school, my mom tried to get me in a private school. They were like, well, he has a jerry curl. He has a jerry curl, and... He's going to have to cut the jerry curl off. They told me I would have to cut, and they knew I wasn't going to cut my goddamn curl, but fuck that. So I've been a victim of that. Yeah, with no waves, um, you know, no, no, um, no gang colors. You, 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 we looked at your social media, and you had on a blue shirt. That means you're a crip, so no, no, no gangs. So they'll just, I'm, I'm white and I say so, you all out that damn school, okay? That's the con game of that school choice, guys. It's to resegregate, to get the white kids into these private schools that the public has to pay for with their federal dollars paying for these damn school vouchers. And the black kids, they won't, they're not going to give black people a charter to get their own private schools to use the damn um, um, vouchers. They got to go through all types of hoops. You dig? You dig? Yeah, and the black kids, they'll suspend them. They'll let them in and then suspend them. The minute they're two minutes late, they'll suspend them and they won't let them back in. So it's, it's resegregation, guys. It's a resegregation hustle. So that's what that school choice is about. It's a con game. Okay? Let me read the rest of this stuff. All right? Where are we? Where are we? Okay. Let's break some more of it down. Okay. And it goes back to education. Black people can afford. African Americans can afford. Spur innovation ecosystems by connecting minority institutions with the federal government. That's more non-blacks, okay? Uh, cheaper, better and cheaper health care. All of this is all trickle down. All of it. I don't even have to read it. It's all just trickle down. It doesn't even mention black in here. It's all trickle down. Now, let's go to safety and justice. Continue to make historic improvements to the criminal justice system through common sense actions like the First Step Act, including increased use of drug rehabilitation versus drug incarceration. Now, that's going to help white meth heads. That's for the white meth addicts. That's going to help them. Also, they got the National Clemency Program to unite families and invest in human potential, focusing on wrongful prosecution and rehabilitation. That's going to help black people who were in jail for 50 years wrongfully. So... That's for black folks. Again, they put these things together for black folks who's already in the jail system. So if you've been in jail for 100 years wrongfully, they got a program for you. Okay, so you got to do 100 years in jail before you benefit from that. All right? Let me see. 
restoring safety to America's great cities by working with police departments, community leaders, and mental health professionals to install the most responsive, professional, and accountable model models of policing, including diversity training and accreditation standards. That means more money to racist police. That's all that is. We're going to pay the police to not be racist, which you can't pay anybody to not be racist. That's what that is. We're just here's more money when they when they're racist to you, when they beat you up and they kill black folks instead of punishing them. We're going to make them. We're going to give them more money to take a sensitivity class. We're going to have them go go to get a Popeye's chicken sandwich. We're going to have them go to the African American History Museum to see why it's bad to shoot you. Con game. All right. And this is some of the fuckery right here. You see, prosper. Okay, I'm fucking up. Hold on. Come on. Where am I? What did I do? What did I do? What did I do? Okay, here we go. All right. Okay. Prosecute the KKK and Antifa as terrorist organizations and make lynching a national hate crime. Okay, that's protection for the white supremacist groups. Okay, that's all I'm going to read on that. But right there, that's a con game. Number one, um, the KKK is basically a relic. The KKK is a relic. The KKK is not as active as they used to be. Nobody's walking around in clan robes. They have morphed into the Proud Boys, the Boogaloo Boys and all of that stuff. They've morphed into all of these Patriot Prayer, the Three Percenters. They've morphed into Trump's base. Trump's base is the KKK. They've been morphed into all these new names. That's why he didn't name, he didn't say white supremacist group. He knows that people walking around in Klan robes is a thing of the 1920s. Lynching has morphed too. Nobody's really... The, they're not openly hanging people. See, that was a nothing burger statute right there. They're lynching people by running in their homes and killing them like Breonna Taylor. That was a lynching. But notice he didn't say white supremacist groups. But he said Antifa. Antifa, that means, and, and let's be clear, Antifa is not an organization. There is no organization called Antifa. Antifa is any white person who fights white extremists. If you are a white person and you're fighting against white extremist groups, you're Antifa. It's a con game. Yeah? That's a con game. So you can't punish one white supremacist group and then punish the people fighting the white supremacist group. So this is a big nothing burger. You think? That's a big nothing burger. So this is a con game. But we use it to our advantage. Even though this is a con game that we ain't going for, we can still throw it up in the Democrats' face like, okay, yeah, this is some bullshit, but at least he mentioned some things for black folks, specifically, like the black farmers, shit like, shit like that. But most of it is just a nothing burger. You then? Now, and I said this on Twitter, he changed a lot of the trick bag language and, and got some of the terminology right specific for black people, that's something that would be interesting that we could have a serious sit down and look into. But that's we, this is a joke as it is right now. Well, we don't take it seriously. And there, you got some people out here, a lot of these immigrant coons who's not foundational black Americans, are, I don't give a damn what Trump offered. I ain't digging that shit. Well, you're not a foundational black American. See, we, we better understand this. I don't give a damn about whether these people are skinning and grinning with black folks. I don't care about that. I only care about who's going to bring some tangibles to black people. See, I'm not in, in the liking contest. I'm not trying to get hugged on. Who, who's going to break off some tangibles for us? Understand, in the 1960s, Lyndon B. Johnson was a, a very hardcore white supremacist, but a lot of the civil rights bills got passed under Lyndon B. Johnson. Because he knew, I mean, this is going to rehabilitate the image of the Democrats. He knew, he said, like, when I pass these bills, these niggas are going to be voting Democrat for 40 years. He was absolutely true. Lyndon B. Johnson saved the Democrats. He gave the Democrats, he helped the Democrats get 
a, a, a dedicated base, which was us. Lyndon B. Johnson knew that. He knew if I throw these things out here at the black folks, because these niggas are very loyal, they're going to be loyal for life, for decades. And he was 100% right. And he was racist as shit. They got Lyndon B. Johnson on um, secret recording because J. Edgar Hoover would record everybody. He would record presidents. He got him, Lyndon B. Johnson, using nigger, calling Dr. King the nigger preacher. I mean, just using nigger left and right. But we got something from his ass that nobody else was giving. Some of those bills and statutes, they did help to a certain degree. And he was racist as fuck. So I don't give a damn about being liked or liking the person. What are they going to do to bring our tangibles? You dig? What's going to be done to bring our tangibles? Now, some people made some interesting, I saw some interesting videos about what we can do about dealing with some of these race soldiers. And by the way, don't forget, guys, go to get your Karen Keychain, since we all in here heavy and shit. Get your Karen Keychain, KarenKeychain.com, KarenKeychain.com. And by the way, I'm going to be, um, I'm traveling this week. I'll be in Chicago. We're filming the new Buck Breaking movie. I'll be in Chicago tomorrow. I'll be in Chicago tomorrow. I'll be in New York Wednesday, shout out to my New Yorkers, I'll be in NYC, I'll be in DC later this week. There's a TV show out there for PBS I'm doing, we're going to be filming for Buck Breaking too, and I'm going to be doing some, shout out to my brother Kemet, shout out to Kemet Shockley, I'm going to be doing a, some show with PBS, I forgot the name of it, but I'll be out there in DC this week, shout out to my DC people, and I'll be in Orlando, we got uh, my brother Phil Ballantyne, we're going to have him in the Buck Breaking so I'll be in Orlando. Shout out to all my Orlando people. So I'll be in Orlando this week. I'll be in D.C. this week. I will be in um, New York this week. I'll be in Chicago tomorrow, actually. I'll be in Chicago tomorrow. Shout out to my Chicago folks. You then Be careful in New York. I can imagine. I can imagine. Yeah, all my New York people, hit me up, man. Let me know what's going on in New York. I'll be there for a couple of days. I, You know, social distancing and all that shit. Yeah. Man. Yeah, our brother Phil Valentine's going to be dropping some real hot fire in the movie. He's going to be dropping some hot fire. But um, some people were talking about, I saw a video where brother was talking about, he made a lot of sense how one thing we could do to help thwart some of these race soldier killings is black people start insuring ourselves. We get insurance for ourselves which is a good strategy, I think. I was having a debate with one Sambo, a foreign Sambo, about voting. And he was talking about how bad Trump was and all this old shit. And I said, look, man, Biden and those guys are the worst. All of these killings of black people, dude, they happen in Democrat-run cities, okay? A lot of these killings of black people, Breonna Taylor, George Floyd, Orlando Castile, Tamir Rice, all of these places, they're done. These killings are done in Democrat-run cities. And he was like, man, man, we still need to get Trump out, man. It's going to be real bad on Trump now. I said, dude, how much worse is it, is it going to get? Is, we already under Trump. How much worse is it going to get than it was under Obama? How much worse is it going to get? Eric Garner is killed. Yeah, yeah, Democrat city. How much worse can it get under Trump? What are you talking about? Man, it can get worse. What's that? Shit, sure. slavery. Slavery. Okay. Number one, what slavery is Trump going to put? White supremacy is slavery, technically. Also, the prison industrial complex is slavery. You understand? The prison industrial complex is slavery. And also understand, death is worse than slavery. Getting ambushed and killed, being a sitting duck is worse than slavery. Let's be very clear. 
because in slavery, let's talk about antebellum slavery, at least they had a chance to escape the plantation and go to a free area. They could go to Florida or they can go to Canada. At least they could escape. And hell, if some people even bought their freedom. You then? You can't escape death. When you die, you die. But the thing is, let's be clear. Let's talk his history. During antebellum slavery, they were not killing black people indiscriminately the way they're doing now. You dig? They're not killing the black people who were enslaved indiscriminately. They were working them and working them to death, but just indiscriminately killing black people? No, they were not doing that during antebellum slavery. Why? Because during slavery, black people were the slave owner's property. Black people were insured by the slave owner. So you just couldn't come along and just start killing property. You would get in trouble with not only the slave owners, the authorities, and the insurance companies. That would be a problem. That would be a problem. So a lot of black people during slavery were insured. So they had protection as if they were cattle, but they were valuable because if you paid $5,000 for a big strong buck, you're not, you don't want nobody to kill them and mess your investment up. Now that's a problem. You understand? Yeah, Aetna and all these insurance companies made, why do you think they made so much money? These insurance companies, yeah, many people don't know this. Damn near all of the major insurance companies came out of ins insuring these enslaved black people. That's how the insurance companies got started. Lloyd of London, they got insurance for insuring the slave ships. You understand? This is how they got their money. This is how all these insurance in co companies popped up. And let's go into the Jim Crow era. In the Jim Crow era, and I talked about this before, a lot of black insurance companies got their come up because the white insurance companies did not want to insure black people because they knew black people were under the threat of lynchings all the time. So they didn't want to cash out no black family. And if they did insure a black family, they would make the premiums extremely high. So that left a lane open for black insurance companies to come in and say, okay, we'll insure you. Anything happened to you, we'll cash you out and we'll give you reasonable premium rates and all that. So a lot of black insurance companies started to cake up. You then? So, we should look into that. What, do we have any black people who are in the insurance game? See, what we should do, and people have been suggesting this, black people, every black person, especially a black male, but the black men and black women, we start getting at these insurance companies. Yeah, A.G. Gaston, that's another one. I met A.G. Gaston. He, has a, he, he came up off insurance. A.G. Gaston was like the richest black man in America. You understand? So let's be very clear. More people have been killed now in the last, what, like eight years than in the entire Jim Crow era. There were a lot of lynchings, but usually the lynchings were when black people would oftentimes wander off into a white neighborhood or walk, wander off somewhere after dark they weren't supposed to be, weren't supposed to be in air quotes. And if they would attack a black community, they would have they would have to go in and just wipe the whole community out. If the, the race soldiers went into a black area, they would have to wipe everything out and burn the buildings down and burn the insurance companies down. They would have to literally destroy the whole thing. You think? But just indiscriminately just walking into a black community, killing a black person. No, 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 no. It couldn't do that because... The insurance companies, you, you have to cash out on that. And let me tell you something, they got riot insurance too, by the way. There's insurance that protesters get, and out here in California, they were trying to get out of paying off 
the um, the protest insurance because they were like, okay, if you go to a protest, you're putting yourself in the line of danger. No, you're not. Let me find that article, by the way. Let me find that article real quickly. I want to find that. Talking about protest insurance. Where is that? Because, see, we got to know all this stuff. We got to know about a lot of this stuff. Where is this? Where is this? Here it is. Okay. There it is. Okay. This is, let me put this up. Okay. Okay. This came, I wouldn't this come out. This came out um, earlier this year, a few months ago. This article right here. Okay. Come on. No, 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 no. I don't want that. Come on. Get out of here. Okay. California insurance policies can't deny claims using riot clauses. So it's not riot insurance, but they had a riot clause. Insurance commissioner claim. With numerous protesters hospitalized or seeking treatment following recent demonstra demonstrations, social media left lit up with activists advising one another to check their health insurance policies. For language that implies that participation in a riot could be grounds to deny a claim. And in California, it appears that such clauses are not permitted. So they know, guys. See, the insurance companies know. See, they've been, they keep, they keep quiet about this. They know because if we start smartening up and start getting these claims and say, okay, look, look, if y'all out here, we go to a protest and it's peaceful and we're getting shot with rubber bullets, man, get some insurance on that shit. That's what we need to be doing now, family. Before you go out here to a peaceful protest, you need to be out here getting insured so when the police is they out here sh knocking people's teeth out, putting holes in their arms with rubber bullets and all that, get your ass insured. Get insured. Insure your children. Insure yourself and your family. And when they see, now it's not a scam. Somebody say a new insurance scam. It's not a scam. No, it's not a scam. Because I know white supremacist groups do that. Those dudes be going out here. And I found this out a couple of years ago. They go out. They go to a protest. Uh, these boogaloo boys and all that. And they go get insurance beforehand. They go instigate fights. And then go get beat up. And film themselves getting beat up. And they put all types of extra shit on it. Oh God. I was beaten by Antifa dude. I got beaten by Antifa. And they go out there and instigate it put it all on camera, and then go get a, a little quick payout. The white supremacists are doing this type of shit. They do that type of stuff, dude. So, dude, that's not a scam. Go get insurance. You're going to a peaceful protest, and a race soldier just, just hit you up with rubber bullets and ran over you with a bike. You better go cash out. You dig? Yeah, like that bow and arrow guy. Yeah, that white man went out there with the bow and arrow and they beat his ass and all. And he put all types of extras on it. Oh, God, I was I was just out here in my car, dude. A bunch of blacks came and they beat me all around. They sucker punched me, dude. Yeah. So they are, they're up on a con game when they do it. But we legitimately need to get out here and get insurance so that when we're out here walking around, we're not just sitting ducks. If we, if we get hit, we can have our family taken care of without depending on mush mouths getting out here making deals with the damn police. Especially if you're a father and you're a breadwinner, you definitely have to be insured. Because if you get hit by a race soldier, make sure your family is good and make sure they don't have to cut no damn deal and be out here talking about how much they forgive the race soldiers for hitting you. You got a life insurance license in D.C.? Listen to me. This is why we need to be on some networking shit. I want black people. If you have life insurance, if you have a license to do life insurance, can you please email me so I can let people know who the hell you are and we can organize this? I want to do this for real. If we have black folks out here with life insurance licenses, email me at info at Tariq Elite. Dot com, info at TariqElite.com. Take advantage of the moral hazard as we should. Let me tell you something. When there are a lot of black people getting insured, 
And understand, these insurance companies got big paper. Let me tell you something. When you got a bunch of black people insured, these insurance companies will start going after the damn police. Now, if black folks are out here paying for these policies and these race soldiers out here thinking they got a green light to kill folks, these insurance companies will get their own lawyers and say, hey, we're going to have to start suing these damn police agencies to stop us from losing money from having to pay out all of these damn um, premiums. Because remember, when families get killed, it's taxpayers doing that shit. Put that brunt on the damn insurance company. You put the damn weight on the insurance company, they will have their lawyers out here on these damn um, police unions and all of these sheriff department's asses. They'll stop that shit. You know? Yeah, help. some insurance is 40 bucks a month, man. 40 bucks a month. We need to start doing that. If you're out here protesting, you better have you some you better have insurance. They hit you with a rubber bullet and fuck you up, nigga. Get, get your check. That's the plan. I need my black folks who have insurance licenses to hit me up. Let's get this thing organized and do this thing for real, for real. Especially out here in California, especially in New York. Info at your, and don't email me with no bullshit. Ladies, don't email me your titties. I be having crazy motherfuckers sending titties and shit. I do not want to see that. I got to explain. I hate when I'm, so, there's one crazy, the crazy titty girl. I talked about her before. This woman be sending me shit on Instagram. She be sending me DMs with her titties. God damn it. I be sitting there with my kids. I be on, sitting here. <laughs> And just opening up my Instagram and there's titties and my kids sitting here. Ooh, boobies, dad. Who boobies are those? I'm like, shh, your ass up. Where your mama hit at? You know. Because <laughs> my kids be telling my wife everything. Mommy, daddy has boobies on his phone. But who boobies you got on your phone? Nothing. She, they talking about SpongeBob or some shit. They, I don't know what they're talking about. But listen, family, listen, listen, listen. We're going to do that insurance thing. We need to really get heavy in that insurance game. That needs to be the wave. Because, see, these people organize against us. We got to organize. We got to use the systems that we have in place right now. We got to use the systems that we have in place. I want my brothers and sisters who work in the insurance industry to hit me up so I can let people know who you are. I will send people to you. Let's get that over, just like with lawyers. And I met a lot of great lawyers at the Foundational Black American Conference. I, I got to holler at y'all too. I met a lot of great lawyers down there. I really want to holler at you too. Um, I didn't get to mingle with a lot of the vendors like I wanted to. Did we have, I think we had some brothers and sisters who had insurance firms or who had insurance licenses at the Foundational Black American Conference. I would like to, to talk to, to you as well. But if you have an insurance license, and if you work in insurance anywhere around the country, email me so we can organize this and we can start getting people signed up for policies out here. For real, for real. Let's make some real moves back here. What insurance you need? Let, let, let's talk about what's needed. California, email me. Let's get this thing going on. Yeah, let's get it going on. It was some credit repair people. Okay, okay. Yeah? You've been saying that insurance the thing? Yeah, you start attacking that money. See, that's the thing, family. See, black folks right now with these payoffs, see, they don't mind these payoffs. They don't mind giving $12 million to a family. That's coming out of our tax dollars. So that means that money ain't going to go to our schools. That money is not going to go to fix our roads. That money is not going to go to help us with businesses. You understand? But if we put that brunt on these insurance companies, nigga, some shit will start changing. Some shit will change. These insurance companies have to keep making these cash outs. They'll start making some change. These insurance companies, man, they have a lot of influence on politics, guys. 
A lot of these insurance companies have a lot of influence on politics, the political landscape, because all of that has to do with, with driving. You know, they have influence on the driving laws, guys. You understand? They have a lot of political influence. When you, there, There's a reason. Look, there was one time where insurance wasn't mandatory. You didn't have to get insurance for you. Insurance was optional. They made insurance mandatory, I would say. When did they start doing that? Like in the early 90s? I remember when you, you didn't have to have insurance. Yeah? So now those insurance companies are like, hey, look here, we'll let's make this deal here. Let's lobby this. Let's throw a little dollar here and make that shit mandatory, whoop-de-whoop, -whoop, so we can all cash out. Yeah, back in the 80s, nigga, you could go get a car, drive that shit, crash into everybody. With no insurance, it's like, oh, well. Nigga, I see you when I see you. Yeah? Yeah, they started that in the 90s. Yeah, they started that in the 90s. Mandatory insurance. Yeah, and then I, yeah, I remember in the 80s, niggas was willy-nilly like a motherfucker with the insurance. You can, you didn't have to have it. Yeah, a lot of y'all don't know that. A lot of my youngins don't know that. At one point, you did not have to have car insurance. You can go get a car and drive that motherfucker until the wheels fall off. And you didn't have to have insurance for it. They made that in the, um, in the 90s. They made it mandatory. Yeah. So I'm just giving you the point that a lot of insurance companies, they have a lot of influence on laws, policies, and if they are paying out insurance because of black folks getting harmed by police or getting harmed by going to these protests, they will say, okay, let me go holler at some of these damn lawmakers. We're going to have to make some changes with the way they interact with these black folks. We're going, we, us insurance companies, will start hitting up these police unions and all that shit. Yeah? So that's what it is. So email me, man. That's going to be the wave right there. All right, man, let me get up out of here. So now that's, that's our assignment, guys. We need to start looking into that life insurance, that um, protest insurance, all that stuff. You yeah. then? We need to get that going, guys. Anyway, don't forget, guys, go to KarenKeychain.com. Get to Karen Keychains. Also, go to OgunJuice.com. To get your Ogun Juice Pepper Spray, to get your Ogun Juice Socks, to get your Ogun Juice Mask. Also, guys, next week, a lot of people have been asking to see the Foundation of Black American Conference. People want to see the stream. That is being edited right now. That's being edited together. We're going to have to cut it down because the whole event was like, what? So it's like, a, it, they were like eight hours. So we're going to have to find a way. We can't show the whole eight hours. So we'll, we're going to cut it down, uh, I'll say three or four hours, something like that. We can't show the whole eight hours, but we'll, we'll cut it down. Um, and that's going to be available when I get back. My editor is working on that now. So when I get back from traveling and filming, that will be available next week. Yes, the FBA flag, that's going to be available in a couple of weeks too. A lot of folks love the FBA flag. You're going to get that too. The Possibly the same time the um, stream comes out, the flags will be ready, ladies and gentlemen. A lot of folks are asking about the FBA flag. That is coming possibly next week as well, ladies and gentlemen. All right? So anyway, you guys have a great week. Again, I'll be in Chicago tomorrow. I'll be in New York Wednesday DC, Thursday, Friday, and I'll be in Orlando Saturday. So all my people out there, holler at me. Let me know what's going on out there. And you guys have a good, safe week.